Ah, hi there, folks. I'm Captain Benzie, and welcome back to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to pop open the hood of EVE Online and kind of show you how everything works. In today's video, I want to talk about what you should do once you've got Omega activated on your account, whether you've paid for it or whether you've managed to grind up the ISK to buy the Plex for it. In previous lessons, we've talked about how to do that, what Omega is, why it's a good system, and basically just how it all operates. So today we're going to be taking that next step and saying, okay, I've got Omega, now what? If you do find this video useful, please let me know, hit like, drop a comment, you know the usual drill by now. Join the channel as well, by the way, we've got channel memberships, really cool way to get some really exclusive perks for the channel and help support content like this, which honestly, I think is really cool. Anyway, so let's jump right in. You have just purchased Omega. You now have Omega active on your account and you're really not sure what to do next. Now, this is quite a broad topic. I'm not going to cover absolutely everything because it's a little bit crazy, right? But what we can do is talk about the concepts of what you should do next. Now, one of the main things that is locked behind Omega is the skill training speed and certain skills themselves. This is therefore something that you are going to be considering the moment you have a Mega. Of course, you can also look into the fact that now you can fly Tech 2 ships and use certain modules that you couldn't before, all that kind of thing. But essentially, having just unlocked a Mega on your account, I'm running with the kind of assumption that you probably are looking now to maintain that Omega. That would be my main thought. Now, I've said before in other videos that just because you've got Omega once doesn't mean you should absolutely do everything in your power to make sure that you get it two months in a row. If you have saved up enough to get a month of Omega, you might not, you know, if that's taken you two or three months to do, you might not be able to do that in one month before your Omega runs out. And that's fine. That is absolutely fine. If you go back to Alpha, then any of the stuff that you had whilst Omega doesn't go away. It just gets locked temporarily until you come back to Alpha, until you come back to Omega. So any skills you've trained, any ships you've bought, you just don't get the benefit of those skills and you can't train them any further and you can't undock those ships. If you're in that ship whilst docked, it will require you to change back to an Alpha friendly ship before you can undock. So the first point to consider really is what do you actually want to do? Now, if, for example, you've been mining and gathering resources and you've been selling those to get Omega, then you're probably going to want to look at ways to do that more effectively. So, of course, coming into your uh, into your skill training here and going into all of like your mining skills, which I can never remember which part of the tree those are under, but you could then start training some of these up to a higher level, right? I think so, yeah, resource processing, of course it is. You could start training some of these Omega-locked skills in order to be able to harvest resources better. Therefore, using something like an Omega-locked mining ship, perhaps, if we go into the ship tree on this one, which, of course, I haven't set up on this either. Uh, the joys of having to redo everything. Let's go into the ship tree and into the ore ship tree. So obviously some of these are locked behind Omega. If you've been mining an adventure, you could now go up to something like a prospect or an endurance, especially useful for gas harvesting. If you're just wanting to shoot rocks in high sec or low sec or whatever, or you're out in null sec with a corporation, then you could go up to your mining barges like your procurer, uh, procure, your coveter or your retriever. These are going to allow you to harvest more ore than you could before. So it might be the case that you want to train into those skills as quickly as possible to, in order to be able to fly those vessels effectively and harvest resources. Now, as always, when you are upgrading from one ship to another, make sure that it is actually beneficial to fly it first. Now, obviously, you are probably fairly skilled into a venture if this is the path you're taking. Yes, you could just go straight to a retriever, but if you're only mining barge one, the venture might actually harvest better than the retriever would. So get that trained up as quickly as possible to get out there and start strip mining some asteroids, and that might help you get a mega. If on the other hand, you're a combat pilot, imagine you've been running missions in something like, say, a hurricane or a hurricane fleet issue. You could now look at going up to something like a sleep near, or if you've been using battleships, you could look into maybe training into a marauder. It's a bit of a hard press at that time because of how long the marauder skill takes to train. But certainly at like cruiser and battle cruiser level, you can start looking at the tech two stuff. If you've been flying something like a hurricane fleet issue, I would strongly recommend going into something like a vagabond. Or if you've been flying a drake or a drake navy issue, you could 
could come into a Cerberus. This kind of thing. Look for a ship that uses skills that you have, plus a few other bits and pieces that are going to allow you to do higher tier content. This is especially true with things like Abyssal Dead Spaces. Perhaps you've been running Calm Abyssals in a standard Tech 1 cruiser or a Navy issue cruiser, and you're now looking to go up to like your Tech 2, Tech 3 Abyssals, that kind of thing. That's a path that you can take. Start skilling into a better ship that is going to allow you to earn more ISK. Just don't burn yourself out would be my biggest tip at this point. It, it is so tempting to sit there and go, well, I've got a month of Omega. I need to make the most of it. I need to log in for as many hours every single day as I can. And then three weeks in, you're just so done with playing you online. It's become boring because it's now a grind for you. I know so many players who have gotten into EVE Online, who have got Omega for the first time, decided that they never want to pay for Omega, so they're just going to grind it, grind it, grind it. And the skills just aren't really at a point where that is properly sustainable yet, and so therefore they burn themselves out attempting to achieve that. We talked about this in the when to get Omega video, and I honestly believe that early on you should just pay for Omega. That's not me trying to shill for the developers, that's me trying to stop you burning out on a game that you're thoroughly enjoying right now. But if you do get free Omega for a month for whatever reason, don't try and burn yourself into making sure you can sustain it into the next month. If, for example, you've been flying a Caracal Navy issue in Abyssals and you skill into the Cerberus and you get it all the way up to, say, uh, Heavy Assault Cruiser 4 and you're really enjoying that, and at the end of the month you're like, oh, I don't have enough for a Mega, don't try and push it. Just accept that next month you're going to drop back to Alpha and you just go back to using the Caracal Navy issue and grinding Abyssals in that, having your fun that way. Then you should find that you're able to save up a bit more and that should then get you a mega for your next month, month three in this example. Now, you've already got the skills for the Cerberus, fairly trained high, you can train into some more of those Omega skills, and you'll be able to run those Abyssals just that little bit better. And you might find that by the end of the month, you've almost got enough for your next month of Omega. So you only come back to Alpha again for maybe a week before suddenly you're back in Omega again, and now you've got the skills and the capability to actually sustain that. That, to me, is absolutely the best way of doing that. And this is absolutely true whether we're talking about abyssals or we're talking about wormhole ratting. One of the first things I did when I went from Alpha to uh, Omega, I'd been just using a probe and exploring wormholes and hacking relic and data sites. And about two months in, I had enough to basically get Omega. I omega up. I immediately went into my Cheetah, skilled into that as quickly as possible, and continued doing the same content I was doing, but now with a better ship. And I still actually used the probe if I was worried about losing the cheetah because I didn't want to have to spend out on buying a second cheetah. It was just something I could skill into. And for that first month, basically, this is when I was based out of Thera, I was just flying the probe still, hacking with that. And yeah, I didn't earn as much isk as I would have done with the cheetah because it took a little bit longer to do things, but I didn't have to worry about losing it. And I did lose a couple of probes at that time. And losing a cheap ass probe is much easier than losing a cheetah. And at the end of that month, I didn't quite have enough for Omega, but I kept doing what I was doing. I The Omega dropped off. I then started to, you know, well, I, I saved up that last bit, got back into Omega, and then I went, right, okay, let's do this with the Cheetah. And I found I was able to actually sustain it quite comfortably at that point. Nowadays, I don't pay for Omega because of the referral link that's in my description. If you're new to EVE Online and you haven't used a referral link before, click it in the description. You'll learn 1 million free skill points. Just give me a little bit of a kickback as well. It actually helps me by essentially meaning I never have to pay for Omega again. My current Omega is paid up until I think 2113 or something like that, like the next hundred or so years um, is paid for. So I hope EVE Online is still going then because it's going to be left in my will to my children and possibly even my grandchildren at this rate. Anyway, so that's exploration, that's combat, and of course when I talk about combat I'm not necessarily just talking about abyssals either. Yeah, okay, you might have been running abyssals with a Caracal Navy issue, you might be in a wormhole corp and using a drake to do C3 ratting. Well, now you can train into something like a Cerberus or even a Tengu and start using that and earning more isk that way in order to get another month of Omega. Now, one of the other questions that I'm asked an awful lot when it comes to this is, oh, should I train into planetary production in order to get passive ISK income? I'm going to be completely honest. I have never enjoyed planetary industry. Um, I've talked to people, I've set it up, I've got a lot of people asking, will I ever do a video on it? The thing is, I don't really understand it well enough to properly showcase it in a video, and I don't really do it myself. This is my trading alt, hence the skills are locked. But even on my main, I don't really have planetology skills. I've got the basics that I used to set it up. I set it up and then I never even bothered to go and collect it. 
you can make good money on it. If you are industry minded, I would argue that planetary resources are less about a passive income and more about helping you build the things that you want to build without having to buy those things on market. I think you have to be really good at PI and you have to be kind of religious about going and collecting it and then dropping it off at market for it to really be worth it. And if that's something you're interested in, you know, don't let me dissuade you from it just because it's not my playstyle. Yeah. It absolutely could be yours. I think if you are willing to engage with that system, if you're willing to drop a, you know, across to some of the other YouTubers here who have showcased how to do planetary industry, then absolutely, it's passive income. It is. You just kind of set it up and you just go collect it and you refresh it when you need to. That's it. It's very, very straightforward once it's up and running. Um, and so it is additional ISK. I personally believe that if you are not an industrialist by nature, if industry is not your main thing, like if you're an explorer, a PvPer, or a PvEer, skill into those. You're going to enjoy it more, and you're going to get more benefit out of that with your time with a Mega, and that's going to help you sustain it that way. Planetary, I think, works really well if you're more industry-minded. If you're the kind of person who goes out shooting rocks and huffing gas as your main income and then building stuff and selling that on the market as your main income, planetary industry is just a secondary income on the side that's nice. It's not huge amounts of ISK. It's not small amounts, but it's not huge. Um, I just think it's useful if you are industrial-minded, but if you're a combat pilot, stick with your combat skills. Anyway, on that bombshell right there, that is everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. I'm sure I've missed some stuff out. So if you're watching this thinking, oh, Benzie, you didn't mention this or you didn't mention that. What about this? What about that? Drop it in the comment section down below. I love chatting with you guys. And if I can help you out in any way at all, I will absolutely do so. I love doing that. It's one of the reasons I do suggest channel memberships for people who really want to engage with the community because it gives you priority replies. It flags those replies to me directly and says, hey, this person's commented. Make sure you respond to them. And on that note of community building as well, do stay tuned. I'm going to be starting streaming soon. I know I've been talking about this for a while, but I sat down with a friend of mine in real life. I've now got the streaming setup actually done. I've run a couple of private test streams. It's now working. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. The notification bell is dinged and all notifications has been set. That way, you won't miss out. Keep an eye on that community tab for further updates and join my Discord just to make sure you are well informed as to everything that's going on. Otherwise, let me know how you get on with this one. Let me know what you think, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.